Okay, here we go. Uh, lesson nine, practice problems. Unit two, lesson nine. Um, who's your featured athlete? This guy, Travis Kelsey. Um, Travis Kelsey is so hard to defend. He's this huge tight end with tons of skills, a lot of heart. Um, this is his rookie card from 2013. Um, I don't root for the Chiefs, but the reason I bought his rookie card is because this guy is up in Tahoe <clears throat> for the Celebrity Golf Tournament. And I'm gonna try to get this thing signed. Now, my daughter loves going with me to the tournament. So, she loves Taylor Swift. <laughs> So her mom bought her this hat and she couldn't get Travis Kelsey's uh, signature, but she did get Jason Kelsey's. <laughs> Travis's brother is, a, uh, is known as uh, Jason Kelsey and he's his older brother and he was a, uh, he was a lineman for the um, Philadelphia, Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, he won a Super Bowl with them. But anyway, she was trying to get the... Swifty hat signed by Travis, but he wasn't there on the day we were there. He came the next day. So anyway, she got Jason Kelsey's autograph. But next year, we're going to get either Travis right here or we're going to get this puppy signed. So Celebrity Golf Tournament so much fun. All right, here we go. Uh, lesson nine practice problems. A kite <clears throat> is a quadrilateral. It sure is. You've flown a kite, probably. If not, it's super fun. You should try it. Um, but quadrilateral means four sides. One, two, three, four. Which has two sides next to each other that are congruent. And the other two sides are also congruent. Okay, so two sides next to each other and the other two sides congruent. So two pairs of congruent sides. All right, cool. Given kite W... X, Y, Z. Okay, that's the name of the kite. Show that at least one of the diagonals of a kite decomposes the kite into two congruent triangles. Whoa, that's wordy. All right, a diagonal of a kite. I'm going to use W, Y. So check this out. We're just going to do an auxiliary line is known as an auxiliary line, which you can use in geometry. So that's one of the diagonals. So that's the diagonal. So WY is the diagonal of the kite decomposes the kite into two triangles. So what they're talking about is this red one and this white one. So it decomposes it. So makes it smaller, essentially. Um, decompose is used in science. It's also used in geometry. Okay, so, um, so now we got two triangles from the kite and by forming the Diagonal, which is also an auxiliary line. Auxiliary line is a line that helps us. So we draw another line that'll help us. Okay, I'll show you how it's going to decompose this into two congruent triangles. This one's pretty easy. WY for both triangles is shared. So we're just going to mark it three. We're annotating our diagram. Now you can say that triangle X, W, Y, or let's just go in order. Triangle W, X, Y is congruent to triangle W, Z, Y. Because... WY is shared, therefore we have three pairs 
of congruent sides. And the triangles are congruent because of <clears throat> side, side, side. Number two, Mai has proven that tri triangle WYZ, I'm just talking about this one, WYZ is con congruent to WYX using the side, side, side triangle congruence theorem. That means that she's already gotten there. So she's already used WY as the shared third side. <clears throat> and prove in side, side, side. Why can she now conclude? So she's, con she's concluded that the two triangles are congruent. How come she can now conclude that WY bisects these bigger angles, Z, W, X, and Z, Y, X. Well, because the red and the white triangles are congruent, you can now say that this angle is congruent to this. We're going to put a 1 and a 1. You can also say that this angle is congruent to this. So, angle Z, W, Y congruent to angle X, W, Y and angle Z, Y, W congruent to angle X, Y, W because, and this is where you need a previous concept, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Because both pairs of angles are congruent. So because this, this pair of angles is congruent and this pair of angles is congruent, because both pairs of angles are congruent, um, my can now conclude that WY bisects angles <clears throat> ZWX and ZYX. See how I rewrote the question at the end? But you have to use your logic and chip away at it. You can't just say, oh, I know because I know. You can't say that. That's not going to work. Okay. Number three. Here we go. W, X, Y, Z. W, X, Y, Z. Is a kite. See how it looks like a kite? Imagine there's a string coming off it. Here's you holding it. Yeah, find a kite. Okay. W, X, Y, Z is a kite. Angle W, X, Y. W, X, Y has a measure of 133, 133, okay? Angle Z, W, X has a measure of 60. So this whole thing is 60. 
So this whole red thing is 60. Now, watch this. I know they sh these two triangles share wy. So now I can say that we've got one, two, three pairs of sides congruent. So we have side, side, side. That means triangle. this triangle is congruent to this. So then this has to be 30. The whole thing was 60. They gave that to you. And then I used the shared side to get to side, 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 and then corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay, <clears throat> find the measure of angle Z, Y, W. This one right here. We gotta get this one. Now, I've already proven the two triangles are congruent, meaning this one's 133 because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, right? You know that? So then this is easy. That's known as angle Z, Y, W. So you're gonna say angle Z, Y, W plus 133 plus 30 equals, what's the total of all three? 180, triangle sum theorem, again, coming out, coming at us. All three angles are gonna add up to 180. So angle Z, Y, W plus 163 equals 180. Now to isolate this, you just have to subtract 163 on both sides. These are going to cancel. The okay, last thing is angle Z, Y, W equals 180 minus, 60, minus 163, which is 17 degrees. <clears throat> so that's a lot. So you needed to start with the shared side WY and mark it three. Then you have side, side, side. And then corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So that's how you got the 230s and then the 133s. And then you needed the triangle sum theorem. Wowzers, you needed a lot on that. But that's okay. Like you just got to chip away at these and use what you've learned. And then you can figure out what the little angle of the kite is that you're flying. All right, that was number three. Okay, number four. Each statement is always true. That is given. That's a given statement. Each statement is always true. Okay. Select all statements for which the converse, that's where you flip them, is always true. So this statement is, if two angles form a straight angle, then they are supplementary. Supplementary means 180 degrees. Straight angle is just a straight line, right? So what they're saying is if x plus y forms a straight line, straight angle, then they are supplementary, then they add up to 180. The converse says if two angles are supplementary, then they form a straight angle. So if two angles are supplementary, then they form a straight angle. So if X plus Y equals 180, then they will form a straight angle. That's going to always be true. If X and Y add up to 180, then the two of them together is going to form 
a straight line, which is 180. All right, in an isosceles triangle, so you got an isosceles triangle, right? That's an isosceles triangle, two sides congruent. The base angles are congruent. <clears throat> Okay, that's your statement that's always true. The converse. If the base angles of a triangle are congruent, then the triangle is isosceles. That is also always true. So if you start with these, then you can conclude that these are the same. It's pretty cool stuff. Statement, if a point is equidistant from the two endpoints of a segment, so what they're saying is, this is going to be a perpendicular bisector question, I knew it, okay, so it's one point, one point seven five, of course. Uh, let me just start over. I'm just going to use two centimeters. Make it easy. Okay, so. This thing's two centimeters, right? So. There's one. So our red point is equidistant from the endpoints <clears throat> A and B. All right, so if a point is, e is equidistant from the two endpoints of a segment, then it lies on the perpendicular bisector of the segment. Okay, um, these are tough, wordy problems. If a point lies on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it is equidistant from the two endpoints of the segment. That is also true. So what they're saying is if you started here, would this point lie on the perpendicular bisector? It would because, should I build it real quick? Might have done it. Remember the perpendicular bisector, something like this. So the first statement says, if a point is equidistant from the endpoints of a line segment, then it lies on the perpendicular bisector. They gave you that statement is true. And then they said, if a point like this one or this one lies on the perpendicular bisector, this red line, of a segment, AB, then it is equidistant from the two endpoints of the segment. That's exactly what a perpendicular bisector is. So yeah, this point is equidistant from both A and B. And you got sad, sad, sad. Anyways, <clears throat> that one's also true. Statement, if two angles are vertical, then they are congruent. Um, so if, here comes D. So if two angles are vertical, then they are congruent. Vertical angles are congruent. <clears throat> That's true. But is this statement true? Is the converse sta statement true? If two angles are congruent, then they are vertical? Not necessarily. Because I could easily, um, I could create like a,
Let's say you got this angle right here. Can grow into this angle right here. Right? Those aren't vertical angles. They're just congruent angles in two separate triangles. So D is, the converse is not necessarily true. All right, if two lines are perpendicular, then they intersect to form four right angles. Okay. So, let me see y'all. <clears throat> Baseball card's usually a good example. I'm gonna scratch that. Let's use, use a sticker. Stickers are usually perfect, although this is a different, oh, baseball card. I'm gonna use the junk one. Sorry, Tom Chambers, here we go. If two lines are perpendicular, so this line is definitely perpendicular to this line. One of the things about geometry is you start to notice that the concepts are everywhere. Okay, so you've got perpendicular lines, right? I use the baseball card edge to do it. Basketball, sorry. So, if two lines are perpendicular, they intersect to form four right angles. So, 90, 90, 90, 90. Okay? If two lines intersect to form four right angles, then they are perpendicular. Um, <laughs> that one's true too. All right, so the only one that's not true is D. A, B, C, and E. The Converse. Not the shoe company. <laughs> Converse is like this. We didn't cover it too much. It says, if A, then B. So say you have a statement, if A, then B. The converse is if B, then A. Anyways, all right, prove triangle ABD. So prove that this red triangle is congruent to the white one. All right, <clears throat> this one's fairly simple. You need to know um, that if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal. So if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then alternate interior angles are congruent. That's what you need to know to get this one. And that's from unit one. So this is a unit one concept. The past is coming back to haunt us. <laughs> but anyway, <clears throat> how do we prove this red triangle is congruent to the white one? Well, you got, you're given that AB and DC are parallel. And then DB is the transversal. Transversal is a line going across, cutting across parallel lines, meaning alternate interior angles, like that one and that one, are congruent. And also, these are alternate interior angles, ones that I'm annotating with two marks. So we have two pairs of congruent angles just based on this concept from unit one. So you got two of the angles. Now you just gotta get the side in between them. Side in between them is BD and or DB. So you can just go ahead and say that side is congruent. Why? Because they share the side. So therefore you have an angle, side, angle, angle, side angle 
So you can say triangle A, B, D congruent to triangle C, D, B <clears throat> with angle, side, angle. But first, you needed to know this concept. That if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then alternate interior angles are congruent. And then you also needed this concept, DB congruent to BD, shared side. So you had to make these two points before you jump to this. That makes sense, I hope. Okay. A couple more, then we're done. We're only at what, 26 minutes? Not a big deal. You got 30 minutes. All right, triangles A, C, D. A, C, D. And B, C, D are isosceles. Meaning, sides. So, full angles congruent. Okay. That means also these two are congruent. All right. Uh, angle DBC has a measure of 84 degrees. So you got to be able to spot the angles. DBC, that one. Measure of 84. And angle BDC. A has a measure of 24 degrees. So this little one right here is 24. Not the whole red thing. Just the little one is 24. Now I'm thinking this is 24 too. However, I have to prove something first. And that specifically is the shared side A, B. So if you look at, going a little too fast, but if you look at this triangle right here and compare it to this one, <clears throat> we already have the one and the two and now the three, the one and the two and now the three. So the green triangle that I'm shading in is congruent to this smaller one that's not shaded in because of side, side, side. So side, side, side proves that triangle ABD is congruent to triangle ABC. Side, side, side. Okay, meaning this is 24 also. Why? Angle ACB equals 24 degrees. Um, and that is the corresponding parts. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. When you use symbology, you can save space. Less words, right? <clears throat> Symbols. Okay, so we know this is 24, right? Okay, now um, we've already said B, C, D, and B, D, C. So angle B, C, D is congruent to angle B, D, C. That's the, because they are isosceles triangles. Okay, so 84. We're going to use this 84. So we're going to say angle BCD, this one, plus angle BDC plus 84 equals 180. Now, because BCD is congruent to BDC, we're just going to go like this. 2 times angle BCD equals 180 minus 84. Drag 84 to both sides. 
So you're going to get 2 times angle BCD equals 96 degrees. Divide by 2. Divide by 2. Angle BCD equals 48 degrees. So this is 48 and this is 48. <clears throat> okay. The end goal is to find the measure of angle BAC. So angle BAC equals what? That's your finish, right? This is the finish. So we're trying to find this little guy right here. Now I've got the 24, I've got the 84, I've got two congruent triangles, meaning I know this angle right here, just this one right here, is gonna be congruent to this one because of corresponding parts. So you're gonna say angle ABC plus angle ABD plus 84 will equal <clears throat> 360. Because if you look closely, you got a circle. Okay, subtract 84. Subtract 84. These cancel out. So angle ABC plus angle ABD equals 360 minus 84, which is 276. Now, remember the two red angles are the same because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So you can say 2 times angle ABC equals 276, because these two are the same. Divide by 2, divide by 2. These are out of here. Angle ABC equals 276 divided by 2, which is 138. So angle ABC is 138. This is 138. I know it's getting busy. It's okay. But we're trying to find this angle right here. And you know from triangle sum theorem that all of them have to add to 180. So you're going to have 138 plus 24 plus angle BAC. We're almost there. I know this is a long one. 138 plus 20 is 158 plus 4 is 162. Angle BAC. I'm going to subtract 162 to both sides. These are out of here. Angle BAC is going to equal 18 degrees. So that one is 18 degrees. This is 18 right here degrees. If you really want to check it, you'll know this is 18. You know, these are 48 plus 24. 48 plus 24 is uh, 68 plus 72 plus 72 plus 36. Does that equal 180? Let's find out. 144 plus 36. Does that equal 180? 144 plus 30 is 174 plus 6. 180 equals 180. We're good. That's just one way you could double check your work using the triangle sum theorem. Ooh. Circle number six, come see me if you got it. Um, and you can explain number six to me. Whew. Uh, but your final answer is angle BAC equals 18 degrees, 18 degrees. All right, reflect right triangle ABC across line AB. Okay, classify CAC prime according to its side lengths, explain how you know. 
Alright, <clears throat> no worries. This turned into a long lesson. Oh well. These are fun and engage your brain, right? Right, right, right? Okay, A, B, C. Trace the letters too. They want us to reflect this puppy across AB. And here's AB right here. I know if I reflect this triangle ABC over AB, then A and B are going to stay put. So just make sure that A and B stay put. There's A and B staying put. And then here's where C prime should be. Let's see if it made an indentation. It did. So there's C prime. Okay. <clears throat> we have reflected ABC over line AB. All right. Classify triangle C, A, C prime according to its side lengths. So, I know that this side and this side are congruent. Hmm. I also know that this side and this side are congruent. However, do we know that Two of BCs equals AC. Do we know that? If that's if we know that this side C prime C equals AC, then we can say this triangle. I'm talking about the one that we're trying to classify, the big one. We can only say it's equilateral. If we know that this side is half of this side, but do we know that? We don't know that. So you can't say it's equilateral. A lot of people on this will say it's an equilateral triangle. And that's what it looks like. Let's just see. It might be, but you can't say it is 2.7. Maybe this is less than or more than 2. Point. Yeah. One's 2.7, one's 2.85. So even though it looks that it's like it's equilateral, you cannot say that. Because we don't know for sure that this is half of this. So classify it. Classify means add an adjective. To Triangle CAC prime. All I know for sure is that these two sides are the same. So I'm going to say triangle CAC prime is, let's see if you can get it before I give it to you. I'll give you R, S, T, L, and E. So S. E and S triangle C A C prime is I saw so please, which means um two sides same length. It also means um <clears throat> Those angles are also the same. All right, that's it. Um, let's see how the Chiefs do. Hopefully they don't win another Super Bowl, although I wouldn't, 
I wouldn't be mad because my daughter has become a Swifty and therefore a Travis Kelsey fan. All right. Uh, hopefully we can get this thing autographed. I'll give you an update next year. All right.